Do you think this counts towards my total uh, tree count here for my tree quota? Will you guys count this? Is this is this cool? It's a little dead tree, you know, falling over and starting to lose its uh, its greenery. Looking pretty sick though. I don't know if I really care for it from like the path view, but definitely when you go up to it, you know, we have the stump right here too. It looks pretty sick. I think the the mangrove roots do a really good job of looking like dead leaves. And this was actually suggested by a viewer, Nolan Clark five one seven five one one Nolan Clark. Um, and they suggested a, you know, a little fallen tree here in the forest. And they actually suggested using some of the copper grates as well, uh, to be kind of like leaf blocks, but I couldn't really, I don't know. For some reason, I couldn't really make it work. I liked the idea and I tried a few times, but it seems like mangrove, uh, roots worked a little bit better. And also what the heck? It's so dark now. I didn't know it was going to get nighttime so quickly. There we go. Good morning. Good morning. And good morning, Mueller. Hello. So last time we worked on the interior over here in our windmill. And you guys seem to... Wow, that is a lot of creepers. Hello, guys. I could actually really use your um, your sub your substances. So last time we worked on our interior here inside of the windmill. You guys absolutely seem to love it here. Uh, everyone called me out for my mistake over there, but that's all good. I had a good... Good, good time. <laughs> I don't, <laughs> I had a great time working on the interior here. Uh, I definitely want to work on the second layer here sometime soon, but today we're going to work on another interior. So up here at the observatory, you know, we have a nice empty interior here with nothing going on. You know, there's their, our spyglass telescope. Someone commented in Doe commented saying the observatory seems like a perfect place to have a map room. Look at me using my book and quill. Yeah, we're, we're bringing it back. <laughs> so I think in here, we're going to be working on an interior. We're actually going to try to make at least two floors of it. For sure, some sort of underground area because I want to store all of our maps in here. Now, what does that mean? I think I want to make a big map, you know, an overview map, if you will, of our whole valley area here. And we can slowly see the progress that, we, that we're going to be making from now on. I wish I did this a bit earlier in the series. Uh, but you know what? You you got to learn your lessons somehow, you know? So I'm down to start now. We may as well start now around, you know, around episode 30. So we'll be working on that shortly. And then we will also be working on spicing up the valley just a little bit more. Uh, someone commented. Oh, let me see if I can find it right here. Further commented. I think you could add a little streams throughout the valley and connect them to the lakes. I think that's a really good idea. We have, you know, a little spring right there, too, that we could connect it up to. But I think it would just be nice to add a little bit more water to our areas here. And I think it also would be fun to kind of mess with glass a little bit too with them because in our resource pack here, uh, or with my resource pack, simple water, uh, the water is like a very solid color, which is I think very pleasing to look at. Uh, but I think when it comes to the streams, you know, there's a bit more flow of water than it being still like how it is here at the lake and the, and the ponds. So I think we'll try using some glass panes to kind of mix it up and make it feel like the water is moving, just to add a little bit more texture to it, which I think could be pretty fun to work on. And the last thing we'll work on for this episode, and it's probably the reason you clicked on, hopefully it's the reason you clicked on the video. We will be building a brand new skyscraper in the Cyberpunk city, and it's gonna be the Moss Tower. Now I've been running out of moss quite a lot. Like I always need moss for something random, just to, for some detailing, for some, you know, mostly detailing. <laughs> and I always just am missing moss. And uh, my current method of getting moss is actually right over here. This little stone mound here, like that's part of this cutout. It used to be all the way up to that level and I've slowly whittled it down, just growing bone meal, uh, sorry, growing moss with bone meal and kind of just whittling away at this. So uh, I'm kind of tired of this being my moss farm. So we're gonna make an official building for it. And the one problem we have with wanting to make a new skyscraper here is this ugly building that we made a few months ago, actually. Now, it, it took me a while to actually want to get rid of this building because I kind of liked it, but I kind of hated it. I didn't really have like a purpose for this building existing. So I think it's time that we actually tear it down, say your goodbyes. I don't think anyone was attached to this building. Um, I might have been the most attached person to this building. So... Let's do a quick little, 
And there we go, the building's gone. Finally demolished. Oh my, that took so long to break. Gl glass needs a tool. Like you need a like we need an official tool to break glass. Make it make it a hoe or something. I don't know. Have some fun with it, Mojang. All right, but the building's gone. We're going to probably build the moss tower in this corner over there on this opposite side. All right, but I think it's time to work on the observatory. Cue the transition. Interiors with bars. All right, it's time to build some interiors here. I got my elytra on me just because I know I'm about to go back and forth between the base here, but I'll try to, I'll try to, you know, leave it in the ender chest here. All right, first off, we need flows. Yeah, we need to install some floors here. Maybe we'll install the second floor here too, just to get a little ahead of it. Yeah, let's do it. Oh, I never survive in parkour civilization with that jump. All right, we got the floors installed. Now I'm trying to figure out for the walls. Should we just match what we have on the outside here? Or maybe we do like some tough on the inside. We keep this little mud base here because I like it as like a floorboard. But I'm kind of leaning towards just going solid tough. Maybe we also do a little bit of the deep slate. Uh, like side texture, uh, like this texture right here. Kind of thinking we do a little bit of both. All right, nice. The wall's looking pretty good here. Let's install a staircase too on this backside so we can get up to the second floor a little bit easier. And I'm thinking we have some fun with the staircase too. I want to use... Oh, of course I don't have any freaking iron trap doors on me. Oh my gosh, I'm tired of using this dang elytra. One rocket. Okay, here we go. So if I do these and then a little bit of these, and yeah, you can make that jump. So we can do a little staircase going up like this, and we can use these to kind of make like, make it look like catwalks a little bit. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Boom, bang. Yeah, I like how that looks. It is a little weird to get on to. Maybe we just put some right there to kind of make it a little bit easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, yeah, I like that a lot. And then we'll just do these same walls up here. Then maybe even we try to use these um, frog lights with some slabs on top. Like this kind of to kind of let some of that light through. Yes, yes, I like it. All right, we got the second floor installed, looking nice and pretty. We got another little slot here for the map. So I did it also downstairs here with a little basalt uh, border here. And yeah, we'll put an updated map in here. And then on the upstairs, I don't know, like I, I definitely want to have a gallery of some sort. So maybe we leave that to be the, I don't know. I don't know how we should do the gallery, but we definitely need to fix up the roof here and add in some more was a smooth basalt just to kind of flatten this out make it not look so messy all right the roof is installed we got a little staircase here going up to the observatory part of it looking all empty and <laughs> domey but let's start working on this bottom floor here now i'm thinking we're gonna get a little sciency with it i want to have like little tables for like test tubes and I want it to feel kind of like scientific so let's try to see what i can what i can conjure up for that i got some dark oak here gonna use this for the tables and i think it'll work pretty well as a little tabletop so let's see what we can we can work up here All right, here is our downstairs interior all looking nice and fancy. Oh, I love it. So yeah, we got a lot of little sciencey things going on here and like, I got a nice little cabinets and some shelves and just trying to use a lot of like redstone gadgets and definitely brewing stands as well, just to kind of make it feel like there's something sciencey going on here. I feel like I did a pretty decent job, you know? Over here, I want to put some hanging plants. 
And I think it'd be cool to use the the sniffer sniffer flowers. I don't know what they're called. I know one's called the pitcher pod. Maybe the torch flower. I think that sounds right. But I think those two and those little uh, potted plants there would look really cool. And uh, and then on the upstairs area, I was thinking this would be like the constellation room. Uh, so maybe we do some map art. I've never done map art before in survival. You know, like going over to the ocean and getting a big old area and making it a giant map art and like putting up some sort of constellation map art could be really cool. So that might be what we do up here. And it's going to be a long term thing. So I'll just kind of frame it out right now where we could put some constellations. A little two by two grid would not hurt. You know, boom like that. And then I mean, we could do one back to back. We could do another one right here. And then maybe we do some on this side as well. But yeah, I think some constellation map art stuff could be really fun. And, you know, I've never done it before. So we'll have to see how that progress is. That'll be like a whole episode low key. Uh, but yeah, we'll see. You know, we'll roll with the punches. We'll see how it goes. But I think this is a good little, you know, a little indicator on what we're going to be planning here. Uh, maybe we just keep it to the four. I don't know if any, I don't know if I need any more than that. And then we'll, uh, we'll work on some interior here too, kind of making it like a little map room there. Uh, but yeah, now we need to start mapping out our valley so we can put it all up in these item frames. I wonder, oh, you know what? There's the glow item frames. We should make those. So then these will, uh, will glow and have a little bit of brightness to them when we put maps there. Okay. All right, let's see. So I've never made maps before. I mean, I don't have any. Uh, I think, wait, there's a chance that I can trade with a villager. I might have them still. I think I have a cartographer villager over in the villager breeder we have right behind our smeltery here. I think I have a cartographer who can trade for empty maps. Yes, yes, yes. I don't want to craft them. They're so annoying to craft. Hello, cartographer. Trade me. Well, maps oh come on uh, thank you all right let's make our first map we're gonna do it right here at the starter base because I feel like that only makes sense oh man I missed the starter house it's so beautiful boom our first map and oh this looks so cool on a map what oh my god that's so cool what? I've never seen it. And now you guys can expose me for not making this roof over here on the right. Oh no. And the mountain range. Mountain range actually, the mountain range actually looks pretty cool, but you can see where I didn't finish it too. So I guess we got some, uh, we got some projects around here still we got to finish, but this whole area, especially on the right here where you can see the marketplace and stuff, that looks so cool. Oh man. Okay. I'm kind of excited to, to start mapping this area out. This might be really cool to see. All right, Mueller, you and I are going on a journey around the valley and we're going to be mapping stuff out. So let's put this on our offhand and let's see where our next map is going to be. Let's go right here. So right past the gatehouse. Boom. Oh, and the vineyard looks so cool. Oh my God. So I wonder, I think we'll make this our bottom left, right here. Let me think about this for a second. Oh wait, this is going to be interesting because the cyberpunk valley, cyberpunk said he might not make it in. Maybe we have to zoom these maps out. I kind of don't want to zoom them though. I think the, the when you zoom them out, they lose a lot of uh, quality, which I kind of want to keep. All right, let's see how the maps look like so far because I'm getting a little nervous. This might not be how I want it to be. So let's see. This one is our starter one. Let's just throw it he here. Oh, that really lights up the room. Okay, hold on. Let me just, uh, I am worried about White Bridge. I don't think White Bridge is going to make it into the map. Huh. All right, so I think I got to zoom out these maps. So I'm going to work on mapping the maps out and I'll get back to you guys with a finished map. All right, we have the last of our maps. Let's throw them all up on the board and see what's good. So that one goes here. This one goes here. No, this one goes here. Go, there we go. And that one goes there. Okay. I mean, that looks pretty cool. This is like the majority of our valley. But it's not the uh, the POIs, the points of interest that we actually want. We get this one, which actually looks like I really like how the Italian village looks on this, uh, which is why I'm so sad that like the cyberpunk city is just cut off there. And like the white bridge area is like just cut off here. You can see our dead tree right there. Actually, that looks pretty cool in there in the forest there and our castle ruins and like just a little bit of the windmill. So we definitely need to zoom it out. 
And I will just do that off camera because I want to, I have to fly around with the Elytra and I need to get some freaking more rockets for it. And I'm not looking forward to doing it, but <laughs> I think it's enough interiors for now. Let's move on to making some little, little creeks in our valley here. Cause I think that's going to be a little fun terraforming project for us. All right, so for these streams, we have our base like water sources kind of around here in these lakes and the pond and also this beautiful waterfall that, <laughs> you know, I think it's time we actually save this little this horse right here. He's been stuck at the bottom of this waterfall for far too long. I think we should free him. Come on, buddy. Come this way with me. I'm so sorry you've been uh, you've been swimming for as long as you could. You've been alive. There you go, buddy. Yeah, eat some grass. Welcome. <laughs> Alright, but anyways, let's set up some streams here. Now, I'm thinking a pretty basic kind of like color palette and kind of design. Uh, let me find a little spot where we can set up and I can show you guys what I'm thinking. Okay, so I think our first stream is going to be right here. It's going to connect up from this lake going over to this little divot here. Now, I remember clearing this out a long time ago. There's actually a big old cave underneath this thing. Look. Oh, okay, maybe not that big, but there's a cave underneath this. And I think it'd be nice to connect up with the stream. So let's dig out a little tunnel. Uh, we kind of want to keep it around, you know, the same level and everything. We don't want to be changing our height too much because it is water and water only moves downward. Keep that in mind, guys. Keep that in mind. All right, let's do it. All right, so I want to keep this one fairly small. Like, I think even three wide here is a little dramatic, but... For the most part, like I want the stream and like the creek there to kind of be like no more than like one block wide. Like we we're gonna use a lot of stairs. Here, let me pull out some blocks here and maybe even a stone cutter. So the actual stream, let's have it start right here. I'll we'll just have it kind of cut through. Remember, we're sticking to one block wide pretty much the whole way through. And I guess we should just fill it up with water. Hello, Frederick. I'm gonna put you away right here. You can hang out in there while I fill up this river. Okay, perfect. And now along the edges, hold on Frederick, you wanna come back into my pocket? There you go. So along the edges here, I'm just gonna put on some stone. We'll make some stone stairs and some stone slabs. And we're gonna go through and we're, kind of just, we're just gonna border most of this with stone. Kinda of like this. All right, there we go. We have our nice little stone border here. Just kind of fixing up some of the terrain there. Now I'm kind of trying to keep it very thin feeling. I don't want there to be a lot of stone building up off to the sides there. I kind of just want it to be one little edge. One little edge kind of just showing off the like kind of like an outline around the whole creek here. It has a nice little shape to it, a little bend to it. You know, we, we don't want it to be too unnatural feeling. But I think that looks pretty sick from up top as well. Now we're going to go through and add in some like stairs and some slabs, adding in a little bit of variation into the height of the terrain here. All right, now I'm gonna start going through and adding in some little stairs along some of these corners here. because I want it to feel like it's really thin at some points. And at some points we can kind of, you know, open it up a little bit more, but we just need variation in like the, uh, the, the size of the stream. I think this is a good way of doing it. Oops, that's, maybe I do that. Oh, oh. All right, the shape of this little stream here is actually looking really good to me. Now we got in some more the stairs and some slabs, just kind of making it feel really thin at some points and kind of bringing it open again and thinning it out again. We just need a lot of uh, like size variation on the stream itself. I actually might even do this right here, a little slab action and some stone right there to kind of blend it into the gravel. Yeah, there we go. Nice. Ain't that cute? Now the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to add in some stone variation, mostly just to, you know, kind of break up the monotony of all the stone here. And uh, let's see how that looks. Let's see how it turns out. We're going to try to make distinct little rocks, uh, you know, like using tough and the andesite here. So we're going to make this one into a little tough rock. All right, and here we are. Here's our little creek. I love how this turned out. This is so sweet. Now, I did mention talking. I, I did mention I wanted to use glass. 
Um, I'm not sure how well it's going to work with uh, the design I ended up doing. I was thinking it was going to be a little bit bigger, but the more I thought about it, I was like, I think the, the slabs and stuff will work a bit more. So I think we'll just stick with the solid, you know, our solid water watercolor we got going through here. But if there's like sections, you know, that could use some glass, like maybe right here where the dirt is, this coarse dirt, and like maybe right here too, we could throw in some glass panes maybe just to, you know, add a little bit more texture, like the, like, a, you know, the water's flowing kind of thing. I'm down to try it out. Let's let, let me go see how that looks real quick. All right, let's see. Boom, boom. Oh, I forgot glass panes are annoying. Oh man. Okay, maybe this won't work as I wanted it to, because they do connect up to every single side. Hmm. Yeah, I'm kind of thinking of against it here. I don't think it looks all that good. It connects up to the side blocks, and yeah, I don't know. It just it seems like it's not entirely worth the effort of using glass panes. So we'll just stick to the water. But yeah, let's uh, let's add in a few more. Maybe we make this little pond here just so this little stream here makes a bit more sense. And uh, I'll get back to you guys. Right, the terraforming is done now, which I'm so far pretty happy with it. We got the little pond right here. I didn't do any of the gravel on the floor because like I mentioned a bit earlier, it's all a cave right here. And I really don't want to be bothered to, you know, put blocks underneath and convert all the gravel right now. So we'll, I'll do it, you know, off camera, maybe some other time. I don't know. I added some more rocks here because I thought it would look nice. Uh, they're going to kind of keep consistent. And also did this waterfall over here. Got a little carried away with it. Uh, you know, I, I think I might have mentioned it in the clip, but I was just like, maybe I should add some rocks here. So that was the first thing I tackled. I ended, I ended up adding a few rocks here. Got a nice little pattern, you know, kind of following the flow of the water. Not really trying to mess with the, the flow of it already because I already thought the waterfall was, was quite pretty. But I think this is a nice little touch to it because it kind of gives a bit more sense on why the water is flowing that way. You know, there's rocks in the way. The rocks are pushing the water. And also try to think of like erosion a little bit too. So like on the sides where the water is kind of hitting the rock, I used a lot of like divoted blocks and like flat sides of the blocks. Just, you know, a little extra uh, immersion, maybe detail. Let's call it detail. Yeah, I like detail. Then right over here, connecting these two ponds. Finally, I've been wanting to do this for a while and I was like debating on doing a bridge. And I was like, ah, I don't know. Like I think a bridge might be little too much right here because it's not a very big you know little stretch right here and I already had like the campfire and I really like how these bushes here looked so I decided to do a little tiny creek I'm calling this a creek and it's just very very thin you know using stairs all around going right through connecting these two together so now this pond makes a little bit more sense I think eventually we'll like hook up a waterfall maybe on this side and just have a really ow ow and just have a really beautiful little, uh, you know, little valley here on this side. And also, we got a little bridge here. I went really simple with it, and I think it's kind of cute. It's a cute little bridge. It's just, you know, a little... It's like, imagine someone threw a few planks on the ground and was like, I was tired of getting my feet wet, so I threw some planks on the ground so then I could go right over. So, that's kind of like the idea I had there. I didn't want to go too crazy with it. But yeah, I think that this is, this is quite nice. We're really improving this area slowly over time. And I think... I need to start adding in more of these birch trees just around in general. And I want it to feel a bit more foresty, but I still want it to be really open. I don't want it to feel too, uh, like, canopy-like. I, I mean, I like how it feels right here. It feels really sick. It feels super, super nice. But I, yeah, I definitely want to add in some more of these trees. And also, I haven't mentioned it all yet, but Minecraft, uh, the new drop, the winter drop that's coming out really soon here. It's already October, so which means it's going to come out probably in, in sometime around December. It's adding the brand new pale wood and the pale wood would look amazing with the birch trees, like super, super good. So I'm really excited to try that out uh, when, you know, when it comes time to it finally. And I can finally get rid of some of these diorite walls and maybe we even experiment with some of like the fences that they're adding. Oh, I'm so excited for a white wood set. 
if there's anything else you guys are excited about for the winter drop, I'd love to see what you guys are, uh, you know, what you're excited about. I think the creaking is pretty cool too. This, uh, the, the drop is really growing on me recently. All right, up here at the observatory, I have a few little updates with, uh, regarding the interior and also the map itself. So first we had a little entrance rug here using these coral fans. I forgot that the coral fans even existed. These look so good. And if you're curious, these are the tube coral. I think it's like the blue, the blue one. It has like a little bit of a smaller size to it, which I think, you know, it's a bit more subtle, but it still has that like 3D-ness, 3D-ness, lol, uh, to the carpet. So I did it there in the entrance. And I also did it right here in the middle just to kind of fill up a little bit more space. You know, like interior designing in real life also applies to Minecraft is what I realized when I added in this rug because that's a big part of like rugs in general. And, you know, in real life, it, it helps fill up the room. It helps fill up the space. So I decided to add it right here and it looks so freaking fancy using the light gray uh, glazed terracotta there. Looking real cool. I, I need to start doing more rugs. This is so fun to mess with, especially with the glaze blocks. It has like such a, you know, such a cool pattern to them. But anyways, I also updated the map. It's all two, two times zoomed out. Yes. And now you can see everything in the valley, which is super cool. Uh, you know, we get the cyberpunk city over here looking nice and um, not complete on a big chunk of it. I really, I think it's time for us to start working on cyberpunk city, but also we have our village here looking very nice and fancy looking a little smaller than I'd like it to be, but I think that's all right. And then we also have the, uh, the member temple up here looking like an A for some reason, maybe for boss boss. <laughs> we got white bridge right here looking insane. I wish it didn't look so dark on the top. I, I guess tough blocks on the map don't look all that good. I, I wish Minecraft updated their map colors on, you know, like there's so many more colors in this and like, look at our flower field looks ridiculous because it's all green. It's literally just all green and ugh, it makes me so sad, but we have, we have everything on here that we've pretty much built throughout our series, which is pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty cool looking at this, just like staring back at it. So of course we'll be archiving this once we update it. You know, I think after this episode, maybe, maybe next episode, you know, that'll be episode 30. I will fully update this map, keep it all up to date. And then, you know, with the world download, it'll be included. And then we'll archive this, you know, we'll lock the map frames or whatever, however it works, I'll figure it out. But yeah, this is pretty sick. I do need to add string to the observatory because I think it would look really sick up here, but it has, you know, it's all covered in snow. So I think we'll have to fix that up. And then we also have our fishing village right here that eventually we'll work on too, but oh, it's looking so sick, man. Minecraft maps are really cool regardless of, of how I feel about it. And look, even this little area here hasn't been updated yet with the little streams and like the water I think we added it right here or so yeah i think it's right there oh man all right but let's hop on over to the cyberpunk city as the sun sets on top of the cyberpunk city oh man i still really like how this area looks i think i was gushing about it a bit earlier but it's time for us to actually make a really tall building it might be our tallest building i think it's gonna be a little bit taller than this guy here which might look pretty sick and i'm really happy with this design it kind of stands out from the rest of them which i think is fine because we need to start expanding our horizons a bit more in terms of it when it comes to cyberpunk. So this building that I made is very heavily inspired by cyberpunk uh, 2077. But anyways, the building's very heavily inspired by, I think it's the main protagonist's um, like apartment complex. So it's very inspired by that. A lot of the shapes and like the design and the colors. Oh man, I'm very excited to build it. I don't think there's any more jibber jabber stuff I could say about it. So I think it's time for a little montage, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the montage.
All right, the tower is complete. Looking insane. <laughs> this color palette I built with, excuse me, car. This color palette I built with was a lot of fun to experiment with. I Green and orange work very well together, if you guys didn't know. Pretty sure they're complementary colors. But yeah, man, this building is freaking sweet. And we have a big old sign up here that says Moss. And yes, this will be our Moss Manufacturing Building. Now, I made a farm, and I made it in creative, and made sure it all fit within the confines of this, honestly, not very big building. It's not like, you know, it's not huge. It's very tall. That's like most of its scale. But in terms of like straight dimensions on the inside especially, it's not super big. It's pretty small. Oh yeah, look at all the frog lights making it look crazy. But yeah, uh, I think, yeah, right there, that's supposed to be where a piston goes. So I'll end up building this farm probably just off camera because it's a redstone machine. Maybe I'll do it on on uh, on stream, twitch.tv forward slash WT bars. But yeah, I'm, I'm super happy with how this turned out. There's a lot of details in the building, like the frog lights you saw kind of making up these, just like lighting in general. I wonder how this building looks at night. I did just sleep, so it's going to be a while till we see it at nighttime. But from a distance, that's where this building really shines because it's, you know, it's our tallest building now. It's going to really add to our skyline. So I want to see what that looks like from, you know, all different POIs like we do pretty much every time we make a really big build in our world. Let's see what it looks like from multiple different areas in our world. So first, let's see what it looks like over here, kind of right by the birch forest. Oh, look at that. That's really, really cool. Oh, yeah. Oh, I love how that looks so much. And then eventually we'll get like another building that kind of goes up to like this height there and then another tall building back there. Yeah, no, the skyline will look amazing. Oh, yeah, especially with that really tall building now. <laughs> you know, what's funny is that I used to think this building over here was like already super tall. And I was like, I don't know if I need to go much taller than this guy right here. Like this is already pretty insane. But this guy just blew that out of the water it's literally like <laughs> it's like a whole oh my god it's so much taller i like it though i really do like how much taller it is and it does stand out too from the other buildings because it does have a very unique shape to it using like these kind of i don't know what to call these like just these like extruded panels so like i'm I, the base idea was like this is like a stone building that's been like fortified and kind of upgraded over time and then like some sort of company, you know, that makes moss, let's just call it the moss company, um, took over the building and kind of just made everything all industrial and started uh, producing a bunch of moss out of it. And I mean, yeah, that's really cool. I love the moss sign. That's just like having these words, like text that you can see from a distance, like the bars text right there. We have like the katakana letters right here. We got moss. I mean, the, the katakana letters there say TNT, I'm pretty sure, because that was my plan for this building is to make it into a creeper farm. I mean, okay, here's it by the tree. It still looks pretty cool, but it's just a silhouette at this point. You can't really see any of the details. You can kind of make out the moss letters, but even then it still looks a little, little hazy. But once you get up to like the fork in the road here, it really starts to shine. And yeah, once we get more buildings in this, I'm so, oh man, I'm so excited to work on the Cyberpunk City now. This really got my motivation back. So over the next few days, I will be streaming on Twitch and maybe YouTube. I might do a multi-stream, I'm not sure. But if you're interested, follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash WT Bars. And we will be working on our train station here, setting up all the redstone, getting it all connected up. Maybe we'll fix up the gunpowder farm we have right here in our TNT building. And probably set up the moss farm as well. So, yeah, we got a few things to tackle, and I kind of just want to do them on stream. I don't really want to make a whole uh, segment of a video out of it, because it's mostly just redstone. Yucky, yucky redstone. It doesn't, I don't like making, I don't like making content out of redstone. I think it's more fun just to freaking do it. So, I think that's going to do it, though, for today's episode. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you made it this far, make sure to subscribe and join as a member if you really are interested in more behind the scenes content. Yes. Okay. All right. That's going to do it.